Mm. Yeah, so this is Space Quest 5, the, n the next mutation. Uh, this was released in 1993, so two years after Space Quest 4. For some reason, this one, they decided to do away with the spoken voice dialogue stuff. Not too sure the reasoning of that. I'm actually thinking I should probably look into that so I can kind of figure out what the deal was there. I'm assuming it was probably something to do with their budget. I thought the dialogue brought a lot to the series, so it's a little bit of a shame this one didn't have it. They do bring it back in number six, though. You've probably heard me say that about 50 times now, because I'm pretty sure I talk about that uh, in every, like, every one of these games that I've played. This one here, though, seems to be quite different in style to a lot of the other games. It's, uh, it's still got the humor, but it, I don't know, it's got a completely different style. It's, it's quite cool, actually, though. So I think we should just kind of kind of jump into this jump into this game here. So we'll, we'll watch the introduction. See what the story is there. Space Quest 5. We've got this kind of like upmarket looking intro screen now. Upmarket font. But still got some weird elevator music. But see, Ro Roger looks a lot different in this game. He's got like the strong chin thing, strong jawline going on. Not quite sure. Have Maybe he got some plastic surgery at the end of the last game or something. So yeah, last game we uh, had the whole time travel thing going on. We ended up saving, well, we didn't actually save, we saved to the future. We saved kind of like the future from evil, but not our actual timeline from evil. So not much has probably happened in our, in our actual timeline since we finished up Space Quest 3, which I can't even remember what we did in that game. Oh, we saved the two guys from Andromeda, that's all right. So I guess kind of after Space Quest 4, Roger's kind of gone back to his usual business. So, Captain's Lock, SCS Excalibur. Star date 2709.67. Fleet Admiral Roger Wilco, commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of space known as the Menudo Triangle. I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievements as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. Does not sound at all like the Roger we know. I go forward with total confidence in my ship and my crew, yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of traveling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Each night my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said would one day be my wife. I know she's out there, somewhere. Yeah, so this is, it's kind of interesting how they've done that because they've left it that Roger knows about the future. So he kind of knows who he's supposed to end up marrying and have a child with, which is like, seems like it goes against a lot of the rules of time travel, where like kind of knowing that that stuff can kind of like almost prevent things from happening the way they're supposed to. But that's not important right now. The fate of trillions ride on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, I must follow the supreme guideline. And what would that guideline be, Roger? To boldly go where no man has... No, no, no. To bravely traverse where no creature has traversed. Hmm. That's not it. Ah, uh, skip it. There he is. Man of the hour. Roger Wilco. Admiral, strike ships coming in at 0.35. Alert, alert. Alert. Shields up. Battle stations, lock weapons. Neutron beams locked. Proton torpedoes armed. 
tactical fire neutron beams. Helm hard to port. So a lot must have changed since we last saw Roger. Cadet Wilco, what in the name of the seventh star cluster are you doing in the bridge simulator? Okay, well this makes a bit more sense. Get your sorry carcass out of there and get back to class where you belong, space cadet. And if I catch you in there again without permission, I'll have you tossed out of the academy so fast you'll get warp disorientation. Simulation terminated. Okay, so I guess Roger's not a, a starship admiral after all. It was all a lie. Got some rats running around. Yeah, so this one's got quite a, like, the graphics are kind of similar, but it's got those kind of like comic book style speech bubbles and stuff. His illusions of spacefaring grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk. Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy, where he has enrolled himself in an attempt to realize his lifelong dream of becoming uh, something. The last several months have not been easy for our hero. What with having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolu resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that fate was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. Damn, fate's always hurling spitballs at us. Look at that strut. Man of business. Okie dokie. We are in control. Okay. Oh, what the heck? Maybe we're not. Alright, so how do I... Okay, there's my menu. So, first things first. Bump that speed up a little bit. Get us moving a bit faster. Uh, and we will make a save game. Just to be safe. Let's have a look-see. This aging behemoth has outlived its intended lifespan by several decades and will soon be heading for the scrapyards. So we must be in some kind of like... Must be where like the military fleet's kept or something. This panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the Starcon Space Academy. Cool. Let's uh, do that. Why not? Done. The hollow map directory isn't working right now, and it's a shame because the map system is really cool looking, with garage shading, texture mapping, and ray traced images of every room in the complex. It does sound pretty impressive. Let's have a have a look in here. You don't have time to waste don't have the time to waste mucking about in the closet right now. Oh. Thought you used to be a janitor, Roger. I thought the closet was your like your place to be. Oh, we've got some peeps. We've got some peeps here. So we've actually got two speech um, options now. So I believe this one is kind of like your normal normal um, conversation one, whereas this one is more to do with like commanding people in a way. Or like, yeah, I think it brings up options for like kind of telling people what to do. So talk to these fellows. It's not unlike talking to a brick wall. Okay, I guess I don't want to talk to us, or maybe I just misclicked. Probably just misclicked. Drop dead, Wilco. Wow. Aren't these people nice? Fellow members of the tightly knit Starcon Cadet Brigade. I guess they're just tightly knit with everyone but me. Can't look at that. This locker is used by various professors to store teaching aids for their respective classes. Cool bananas. What is this? The SCS Lollipop. A good ship. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay, can we go into this classroom here? We can. I'm not actually sure what our... Oh, okay. We've obviously gone where we're supposed to. Sorry, I'm late, Professor. 
It's like the, um, is it the teacher from Peanuts that talks like that? You, you mean the ULP Starcon Aptitude Test is today? Oh shit. Yes sir, I'll get started right away. Well, looks like we've got a test to do. What's that? Come talk to you after class? Yes sir. Okay, test time. Question one. Gronko is commanding a Nova class scout ship when he finds himself face to face with three Horak battle cruisers. He should A. Surrender in the face of impossible odds. B. Pretend they aren't there. C. Activate his ship's self destruct mechanism. D. Beam over a pick you up bouquet. Or E. Reboot. So. No clue here. I think the best, best uh, course of action would be to. Pretend they aren't there. Question 2. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately A. Open fire with every weapon at your disposal. B. Broadcast Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries, Valkyries over the comlink. C. Beam your entire crew over to their ship as a gesture of goodwill. D. B then A. Yep, I think that sounds like a good idea. E. None of the above. I think D sounds pretty good. 3. Before beaming down to an unexplored planet for the first time, you should be sure to check A. To see that your seatbelt is fastened and tray tables are locked securely in the upright position. B. Your fly. C. Your life insurance coverage. D. The Fetzer valve in your oxygen mask. E. The planet's atmospheric readings. I feel like this is probably the most logical answer, but it's probably wrong, but we're going to click it anyway. 4. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should A. Gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon from vines and sticks. B. Stuff a banana in its exhaust pipe. C. Drop a big rock on the robot and shout, Hasta la vista, baby. D. Roll in the mud to camouflage yourself. E. Climb a tree, flap your arms wildly, and scream tweet tweet at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behavior of the ruby-throated Arcturan swine falcon as a diversionary tactic. Well, those all sound like pretty good options, I gotta say. Um, this, uh, this answer here actually is something to keep in mind for later in the game, because this is actually a reference to something which, come, which, which actually comes up. Um, I don't know if that's the actual right, right answer here though, but we're going to click it. 5. You're on an EVA with a partner and you notice his face is turning blue and he is clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that A. You will soon need a new partner. That's probably true. B. In a burst of creative insight, he has created a new dance called the moonwalk. C. He is suffering from a vitamin deficiency and needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. D. He fell for the old goof ball in the ear hose trick. E. A and D. Well, A and D would kind of make sense. Let's just do that one. 6. To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequ adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should A. Wrap everything in aluminum foil. B. Cook each meal at the maximum power setting for 45 minutes. C. Put a live space environment in with each meal so that you can more easily determine when it is done. D. Huck the thing and settle for roasting wieners on the maneuvering jets. E. Inject a radioactive plutonium isotope into each piece of food. When it glows, it's ready. Oh, these are all such good answers. I feel like... The wieners. We're going to go for the wieners. Why not? 7. If Grebe leaves the Crab Nebula at 3200 GST, Galactic Standard Time, and travels at 9.75 million ZPM, how long will it take him to reach planet Davicon 5 if he has the solar wind at his back? A. 49.3 hours. B. He will never reach Davicon 5. The solar wind is highly unstable and will blow him off course. 3. Uh, C. Sorry. 3.75 standard days. D. 49.30 GST. 
E. Never. The neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula is so massive that Grebe's ship can never reach escape velocity. Well, I'm clueless to this, so we're going to go for D. Why not? Question 8. How fast does light, light travel through a vacuum? A. 186,000 miles per second. B. Very, 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 very fast. C. 669,600,000 miles per hour. D. Depends whether it's an upright or canister vacuum. I think that's an important, I think it's an important piece of information to have, so we're going to go for D. 9. Which is an example of a fuzzy boundary? A. The area in space between two planetary bodies where a smaller third object is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either. B. The event horizon of a supermassive black hole. C. Place where a receding hairline gives way to the bald scalp. D. The point at which the marginal utility of trying to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity cost of going to the store for a new one. Mm, I th think it's probably C. Fuzzy boundary, sounds about right. 10. To successfully accomplish a manual molecular, molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should A. Reverse the phase polarity of the interface grid. B. Jiggle the handle. C. Pray fervently to whatever deity you happen to believe in. D. C. Then B. E. Switch to us sprint. What? Switch to US sprint? I don't know. Um, let's go for D. Why not? That was the final question. We've probably failed. Tests over already? I failed? Oh, help. Oh, help. Well, that's not good. What the hell? They just like eject us from the station? Dang. It's a brutal test. Okay, so. Maybe you should have taken the correspondence course. So we'll restore back to here. So there's actually a trick to this. Um, you have to actually cheat to pass that test. I think you can probably get the answers from somewhere because I think they're usually the same, the same for each question. Uh, but yeah, the actual way you're supposed to do it is cheat, which is bad influence, bad advice to give people. Space quest. I've always wondered what this panel does, but have never been able to figure out its function. The explanation was probably given in one of the many class lectures slept away during your tenure here at the academy. Academy. Well, okay, so we can't use that. Have we been into here? No. Your security clearance is too low to enter this room. If fact, I think it's supposed to be in fact. In fact, it's so low you need a pass just to go to the restroom. Poor Roger. No one ever cuts him any slack. He saved the bloody universe about five times, but no one seems to care. Okay, so we'll do this test again. Um, I'm just going to save it outside, though. Oh, shit. Did I... Yeah, okay. We'll save it just out here so we can... Um, we can get back to it a bit quicker if we fail. Because I think you can actually get caught cheating and then you just fail anyway, so you have to be a little bit careful here. Alright. Round two. Sorry I'm late, Professor. You mean that ULP Starcon Aperture Test is today? It is, Roger. Should have studied. Yes, sir. I'll get started right away. What's that? Come to talk to you after class? Yes, sir. 
Okay, so, question one. Kronko is commanding a Nova class scout ship when he finds himself face to face with three Horek battle cruisers. He should. Um, okay, so what we can actually do here is look to our side. Now we have to be careful of this orb thing here. I don't know if that's the professor or if it's just some random like cheating prevention orb, but we have to kind of look when it's looking away. So he's got the second from the bottom selected. Uh, I think you actually need to check a couple of test answers though, because people have different ones. Yeah, so he's got... Oh, okay, I see. So it made a noise for the first one, so I'm assuming that's the correct one. I'm assuming. So we'll go for that one. Okay. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately... Probably don't need to read these, actually. Because... Okay, so if I go to him first, yeah, see, it doesn't give me the noise for him. I think I have to cheat off this guy. He seems to have quite a large brain, so guess that makes sense. No, it didn't give me the noise for him either. Maybe someone else. No. Oh shit. That was bad. Um, okay, maybe it just makes a noise when you look at... Look at it, like, in general. I don't know who I'm supposed to cheat off, though. I'm gonna assume it's the guy with the big brain. Like, that seems like the logical thing to do. Okay. Cheating time. So I just want to see if it makes any noise if we go to him first. No, it doesn't. Okay, so it must be this guy we're supposed to cheat off. It should be the same answer, but we'll just check. Yeah, so it must be him. Okay. So, number, number D? Number D. Okay, question two. We've got number E. Or letter E, number E. Whatever you prefer. If you like to call letters numbers, it's cool. I know I do. Oh, another E. Well, well, well. I might actually read a couple of these while we're answering them, answering them to see what the actual uh, actual answers are. So we've got option C. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should C. Drop a big rock on the robot and shout hasta la vista, baby. Okay, well that's a, the correct answer apparently. What have we got next? Option E again. Option E seems to be the popular one. You're on an EVA with a partner and you notice his face is turning blue and he is clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that... Oh, E and D. So this is a sign that you will soon need a new partner. And he fell for the old golf ball and the hose, ear hose trick. Well, I was correct, because I picked that last time. I know about that trick. Somehow, apparently. Okay, next one. Option C. To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequ adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should put a live space varmint in with each meal so you can more easily determine when it is done. An interesting way to check your meals. Guess that's how they do it in the future. Another E. These guys like their E's. If Grebe leaves the Crab Nebula at 3200 GST, 
and travels at 9.75 million ZPM. How long will it take him to reach planet Davicon 5 if he has the solar winds at his back? E. Never. The neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula is so massive that Grebe's ship can never reach escape velocity. Well, sucks to be you, Grebe. Okay, question 8. What will it be? Another E. Jesus. Could have just picked E for like every answer and probably got a pass. How fast does life, light travel through a vacuum? Depends whether it's an upright or canister vacuum. Oh, okay, so we got that one right too. Well, technically that wasn't an E, that was a D, because there was only four options there. Okay, question nine. Two more to go. Almost there. We've got option A. Which is an example of a fuzzy boundary? A. The area and space between two planetary bodies where a smaller third object is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either. It's a very long answer. A. Alright. To successfully accomplish a manual molecular, molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should A. Reverse the phase polarity of the interface grid. I knew that. Everyone should know that. Okay, so hopefully we've passed this time. The test's over already? Come on, pass. Yes sir, I agree that cleaning the academy crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. I'll get right on it. Well, I guess that means we passed. Oh yeah, I remember this bit. Okay, so now we will save. Because we don't want to do that again. Okay, time to clean some floors. It's what Roger does best. It's kind of like a... This is the thing with this game. We've got Jabba the Hutt right here. Um, it's kind of the weird thing with this game is Roger is kind of just like an idiot in the other games and just like kind of like fumbling around and accidentally saving the world whereas now he seems to have like a purpose of becoming a captain. There's a bit of a shift in, shift in the style but it's kind of cool. Uh, what did that say? Some more bright shining faces of Starcon's elite cadet corps. Cores. Um, what do these guys got to say? Get lost, Wilco. Jeez, man. No one wants to talk to me here. Was this the closet? I can't remember. Yep. What the? It's like a Homer Simpson um, sound effect. It's kind of weird. Not here. These um, curses are kind of odd because you'd like to think the oh maybe it's different on this one do you think the like point of the finger is what you click with but it's usually like just the center of the actual icon i think they must have changed it for this one because it seems to be the, the finger now you cram the safety cones into your seemingly bottomless pockets cool so we got some safety cones Orange safety cones, useful for rerouting unwelcome traffic. Wow, the Scrubomatic Power Floor Scrubber Model 1812 with patented sit and spin cleaning action. Buckazoid's Cash Money Spindola. Doesn't actually tell us how much we have though. Isn't very helpful. What have we got here? A pair of your cadet classmates are deeply engaged in conversation here. Let's see if we can join them. Most likely not. They're playing the airlock, Roger. Guys, that shit hurts my feelings. Okay, so, off to clean some floors now. Which I believe is this way. 